Hello, friends and family, and welcome to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Meditation Hour that only lasts 10 minutes. We have just moved into a new home, albeit a temporary home, and we spent a bit of time safely shopping for some amenities recently. And one of the things that we purchased was a coffee maker. And today we had our first morning cup of coffee instead of a cup of chai. And then we sat to meditate. And I think that this is a lesson that I have to learn and relearn and relearn, but it is incredibly difficult to meditate when you are caffeinated, or at least I find it to be the case. I think that this idea of empirical evidence is useful in all circumstances but particularly those where you can compare one situation to another situation or one way of feeling to another way of feeling um, by way of process. So if you have a couple of weeks where you are not drinking coffee or you are not drinking tea, and then you have a couple of weeks where you are drinking coffee or tea, or both <laughs> in our case, um, you can then compare and contrast how you feel in those two situations. If you don't notice a difference, then perhaps there isn't a difference for you. But uh, for many people, I believe, um, and certainly for myself, um, there is a huge difference. And it is not that the meditation practice um, while you're caffeinate, caffeinated um, is not valuable. It certainly is. But what I notice is that the meditation becomes very difficult um, to the point where I almost just want to stop doing it. But I think that that is... It's a good indication of how that hour would have been spent internally <laughs> inside my head um, had I chosen to sit down and try to work instead of sitting down and trying to meditate. The same processes inside my mind uh, would be going on. I would still have all sorts of distractions. I would be as equally irritable. I would be um, equally uh, not lightheaded, but um, aloof, somewhat mentally distant from whatever activity was actually taking place. So if I can't bring my attention to my breath, even for a moment, then, or my body, um, then it stands to reason that I would be in an equally difficult position if I sat to work. That I may feel like I'm doing some work, but um, it's quite likely that I'm just daydreaming or um, letting my mind run all over the place. Um, even if some of those thoughts are adjacent to the work that I have to do, I'm probably not accomplishing very much. So I would actually encourage you to um, explore these uh, so-called mild intoxicants, things like coffee and tea and energy drinks and um, whatever else it is that we do on a rel relatively regular basis um, and to see how they affect your meditation or rather how your meditation can highlight how those intoxicants are affecting you. With that, 
Uh, I will, before we start our 10 minutes of meditation, I will remind everybody, um, and in particular, if anyone stumbles upon this video who doesn't know me, that this is not meditation instruction and I'm not a meditation teacher. This is just a casual conversation about the practice of meditation and hopefully a bit of I'm not sure if you can hear that there's a an airplane going overhead relatively <laughs> low to the ground um, today it's not a helicopter thankfully but I thought I would pause just in case um, I was going to say, I, I hope that this is uh, a bit of encouragement for you to continue your meditation practice and not just to um, engage in conversations about meditation. Uh, so we can grab our 10 minute timer. If you have a timer, you can pause the video and get that ready. And we will begin now.
It has been about three hours since my last cup of coffee, and I can definitely still feel my mind wandering uh, all over the place, even more than it would normally. So some of us, it affects quite, quite a lot. Um, that is our 10 minutes, and that's the end of our meditation period. I hope everyone is taking care of themselves and taking care of the people around them. Uh, have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.